It is Gunnar and Chow, and right now we are joined by one of the most innovative and just overall best singers in all of rock music, Disturbed Frontman David Draymond. New album, Immortalize, is out now. Tour is kicking off in just a couple weeks. David, how's it going today? Good, yourself? We are very good. Happy to talk to you. What's up? Where are you at right now? Uh, hanging with the family, getting in some time that I have available left before we actually really get on the horse here and start riding. Yeah, we're excited to have you guys in town. You're going to be rolling through really just in a couple of weeks, February 10th, playing at the Fargo Civic Center. Now, you guys took a break for a few years, came back strong. What's the reaction to the new album been like? It's been really overwhelming. Um, people have really fallen in love with it, and it's been incredibly positive, uh, especially for some of the tracks that were kind of left of center for us, which we were a little a little worried about. Um, but, you know, a good song is a good song, and at the end of the day, it ends up making its way into people's hearts, I think. So songs like our most uh, recent single that we were working, The Light, which ended up becoming a tremendous success for us. And now with uh, the new... Um, the new campaign for Sound of Silence, our cover of the Simon and Garfunkel classic, um, that's also really exciting. That that track has shown just amazing, amazing organic growth on its own prior to the label or us even deciding to work it as an official single. And obviously starting things off with the vengeful one was uh, definitely the right mood and tone that <laughs> people, I think, wanted and needed to hear right out of the gate from us is that they weren't immediately, you know, given a little bit of culture shock. Yeah, <laughs> but, no kidding. Uh, over, overall, it's been it's been truly, truly amazing, and we are very, very grateful. Yeah, we've been spinning the sound of silence a lot, and everyone here in Fargo is really digging it, because it's just one of those covers you think, this is so awesome, and how did they even come up with the idea to do this? So what did inspire you guys to choose that song to cover? Well, you know, every record, pretty much, we try to find something that we can make our own something that's a little bit left of center to cover, whether it was our cover of Shout by Tears for Fears or Land of Confusion by Genesis or uh, Still Haven't Found What I'm Looking For by U2. We always try to take stuff that's nothing like our style and, and make it our own. And uh, we were really banging our heads against the wall with this particular one because we had kind of definitely, uh, definitely turned over every available stone in the 80s <laughs> to try to find something. So I suggested, you know, let's go back even further. And it was actually our drummer, Mike, that made the suggestion. And this is at the tail end of the recording cycle for the Immortalized record. And we were, like I said, we were kind of stuck. And he said, well, how about Simon and Garfunkel and you know, Sound of Silence? And when he suggested that, everybody kind of was still for a while. We were really, um, we were very, very uh, impressed with the suggestion, but it was a very daunting one because the song is so classic and huge and and you know some people would view it as being something that just simply shouldn't be touched um and uh you know we, we it, i was a little apprehensive about it but um you know, i decided to entertain the notion and then it was actually i thought we'd do it in the same fashion that we typically did the third covers and that is to make it a little bit more aggressive and in your face and um to uh you know make it more rhythmic and it was actually danny's strong suggestion to not do that and, and to go in the ambient ethereal direction and orchestral uh, way that we chose. And Kevin Churko, our producer, came up with that beginning piano pattern that you hear that starts the song out. And when he played that for me, I instantly kind of fell in love with it and uh, hadn't anticipated on tracking anything that day vocally. It was pretty much done for the day and still ended up, due to the inspiration, going into the vocal booth for the longest vocal recording session of my entire career. Three mm. hours of improvising every possible which way you could alternate the delivery and the melody and, and, and the cadence of it and so that it made sense. We found an octave that made sense so I could do that octave shift in the middle of the song that felt comfortable. And, and uh, three days later of him combing through all these takes, and, and by the way, this was the only time in our entire career that both the Mike and Dan and the producer were present in the control room while I was tracking. Hmm. And coming back into the control room afterwards, seeing the looks on their faces was really, you know, gratifying enough to say the least. Everybody was pretty blown away. But after three days of him combing through everything and picking 
stylistically and performance-wise what he felt were the best tracks, the comp, he played it for me. And I listened to it three times in a row before saying anything to him, and he got very nervous, our producer Kevin. He thought <laughs> that I didn't like it and was going to trash it, when in reality I was being really overwhelmed with emotion and was choking back you know, tears listening to it because I had not allowed myself to go to that place vocally since I was a young man. And knowing that I still could and hearing it come out so beautifully and affect even myself in such a way that was so personal and so deep, um, I knew we had really achieved something very, very special. And uh, you know, he, he asked me if I was all right, and I turned around all misty-eyed, and I said, you know, brother, I'm better than all right. This is amazing. Thank you. Thank you for, you know, I think, I think I owe my debt of gratitude truthfully to Mike, Dan, and Kevin for pushing me in a direction that I certainly would not have gone on my own. So very, very gratifying experience. Wow, that's awesome. Yeah. Now that you've uh, gotten to the point where you were able to uh, do that performance on that track and the way it came out with, you know, the softer tone, all that stuff, do you see yourself in Disturbed going down that road a little bit more in the future, maybe on future releases? You know, the beautiful thing about being at the point of our career that we're in is that there are no rules and there are no limitations. And I think that this record in and of itself is a uh, example of how many different things we're capable of as musicians and, and, and that we can go in any direction we choose. And I, I certainly don't see any reason why not. Um, I, I can't see it being, you know, the meat and bones of an entire work, per se, but then again, the, who knows what the future holds in terms of that. We may have seen the, the death of the actual album-length piece of work uh, in our time due to everybody's short attention span these days and may, may not last. But, um, you know, I, I don't think that there are any rules. Uh, our artistry is artistry and music is music, and, and a great song and a great performance should resonate and affect everyone, hopefully so. As long as we follow our hearts and, 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 and try and stick by whatever moves us, hopefully it'll move everyone else as well. Definitely, man. Now, before you go, I got to ask you this. I, I saw you guys in Sturgis. You were hanging out at Easy Rider Saloon. I, I met you right as you walked in. We we're all checking out some hairball, getting down with our 80s, you know, that night. It was a good time, and, <laughs> and I thought it was really cool because you guys pretty much as a band were just there hanging out. So you guys obviously still get along very well. And, and do you get the opportunity to do a lot of things together as a band on the road like that? Uh, on the road, yeah. Um, when when we're not on the road, it's, it's, it's not as easy because you know, Mike lives in, uh, just outside of Milwaukee and Waukesha. Dan still lives uh, in, on the south side of Chicago in the suburbs. And I live in Austin, Texas. So it's, it's a little more difficult to get together as often as we'd like, but um, we do. You know, we, we enjoy hanging with each other. We're, we're, we're family, and, um, you know, we, we kind of uh, find joy in each other's other, you know, other family uh, occurrences and events and good things that, that happen to our kids and, and, and our loved ones, and we share them with each other. And when we do have the chance to get together, yeah, we we enjoy ourselves, and... and uh, you know, it, it is a brotherhood, and it's you know, it's something that uh, we're very, very fortunate to have. A lot of people in this line of work don't have the kind of mutual respect and admiration and camaraderie that we've been able to uh, preserve throughout the, throughout our career, and, and, and we're very, very blessed with that. Yeah, and it shows, man, because you're still pumping out awesome music. We love the new album. Can't wait to see you February 10th right here in Fargo. Anything you want to say to the, the Fargo Disturbed Maniacs before you guys head up here? Just that, you know, they are going to be able to bear witness to the very first unleashing of the Leviathan here in every real sense of the word. We have production elements that not only have never been seen before at a disturbed performance, but several that have never been attempted before in a live scenario by anyone. Wow. Um, they get to be they get to be the the very, very first test crowd um, of our entire full production run. So it, it they they should really prepare themselves for 
quite the spectacle because it is going to be unlike any disturbed show that anyone has ever seen in our community. Well, well the anticipation is high now. Yeah, you just set the bar <laughs> so high, but you know what? I know disturbed is going to nail it. You know what? I, 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 I wish that this were blowing, you know, and I don't wish, but I, I, this is certainly not me blowing smoke, guys. I mean, this is some serious stuff we have going on during this performance <laughs> from a production it. perspective. It's a long set. We go deep into our catalog. Um, and just, you know, let me just say it will be explosive. All right. Bring on the beast. David Draymond, thanks so much for taking the time out, man. We'll see you in a couple weeks. Have a good day, brother. Looking forward to it. Take care, guys.